I'm going to uh, have great pleasure to introduce John Freund's. You know, I've known John for more than 40 years, and I've come to appreciate many things about him. But I have to say that what I have come to most appreciate about John is how he is such a gifted scientist. And even more extraordinary, how he has been able to show us how that science has meaning in our lives, and how that science can be turned into policy change. He has done this in so many ways. He made us safer from lead and co cotton dust exposures through his work in helping establish standards during the Carter administration. He helped get diesel particulate named a toxic air contaminant through his role as chair of the California Scientific Review Panel. He helped eliminate MTB in gas, as a gasoline additive in California. And as you've heard already, most recently, he has insisted that the regulation of methyl iodide is informed by science, not by lobbying pressures. It's because of this research and the way that his research has informed the policy process that John has helped make the lives of literally millions of people healthier and safer. He has done this over the years while also being challenged and harassed by industry polluters, including the chemical companies and the pesticide manufacturers who see John Freund's as the number one pest in California. <laughs> But John has faced them down. You know, after all, it's just a piece of cake for John. Since he had to face down a loony and mean judge in a courtroom in Chicago 40 years ago, <laughs> John Franz. Although John Freund's got a D in science in high school, he had an inspirational teacher who enlivened his imagination to the joys and mysteries of science. With this challenge, he went on to study chemistry at Berkeley and then at Yale, where he got his PhD. At Yale, he helped form a chapter of SDS, which led him to organizing against the war in Vietnam, the demonstrations at the Democratic Convention in Chicago in 1968, and ultimately the charges of conspiracy and the trial of the Chicago Seven. After the tempestuous times in Chicago, John taught chemistry at Goddard College. After teaching at Goddard College and working for both the state of Vermont and in the Carter administration, John came to UCLA and to the attention of PSR. His vision of his role as a scientist has led him to speak scientific truth to power in order to eliminate toxic chemicals. The Center for Disease Control has said that a safe level for lead in the blood is 10 micrograms per deciliter. What the new study shows is that there is significant cognitive decline in children at levels between one and five. In other words, there's no safe level. His research ensures that the best possible science guides our policy decisions. For the past 12 years, we have focused in Southern California on the health impacts of pollutants associated with fossil fuel combustion. So the bottom line is we believe that the ultrafine particles have a significant role in cardiovascular disease associated with air pollution. And if you'll notice here, I want to I want to emphasize, you know, see the ultrafines in the upper upper airway regions? That means that they're being deposited in those regions and they end up being translocated to the brain. There is an ongoing battle in California against the use of methyl iodide on strawberries. John has proved himself a true hero by standing up against the growers and chemical companies to eliminate this toxic substance. This is without question one of the most toxic chemicals on earth and that um, 
we're dealing with something that a, a chairman of a department of chemistry would say, you're taking up methyl iodide, are you out of your mind? John consistently shows us the importance of a scientist who acts bravely on his principles. First, I, I want to thank PSR LA for this environmental award. I'm very pleased and very proud to receive it. I'm honored to be recognized. And I also want to thank all of you for coming tonight to support PSR. Uh, I can't think of anything uh, more important than continuing the support uh, that we have to continue the struggle. It's an honor to receive this award simultaneously with Andrea Rico. We've been married 33 years. And, and this is the first honor we've received, we've ever received. Who knows, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Who knows, it may be one of the only joint awards in history for one person from UCLA <laughs> and the other from my arch rival, USC. <laughs> As a scientist, I'm particularly honored to receive this award because scientists are not always recognized for their efforts. So this really is a statement from PSR about the importance of doing good science. I'm especially proud to have chaired state committees on diesel exhaust and methyl iodide, which you've heard about already, which represent at this point in history major victories. Methyl iodide will not be used in California. And, and that, will prevent, that will prevent illness and death uh, from this super toxic uh, fumigant. Diesel exhaust is now recognized as a human lung carcinogen, recently by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. And so the, the entire international community is now recognizing the toxicity and carcinogenicity of, of diesel. And I want to say, since Mary's here, I want to also say we thank ARB for its efforts to reduce exposure to diesel and other <laughs> airborne particulates. <laughs> Little science. In the, in the lab, we, our lab has developed an understanding of the mechanistic roadmap of air pollution exposure to illness and disease. What we have tried to do is to say, here are the exposures that occur, here are the cellular and chemical events that occur, and here's how it ends up with inflammation and subsequently with asthma, cardiovascular disease, and others. So that we have, we think we've made, at this point, great contributions with respect to the overall mechanism of the disease processes. Finally, I'm a strong believer that for science to be successful, it must be carried out with integrity. I have never wavered in my commitment to the highest level of scientific integrity. And I think it's crucial if we are, if, if the science that we do is to be trusted and uh, taken up at the policy level. I'll continue to pursue the best science in the context of prevention and protecting public health. And I want to thank you all again for this award. I appreciate it very, very much.